Hello and welcome to this video guys. Today we're going to look into RxJS. So it stands for Reactive Extensions for JavaScript, which is a library for reactive programming. So if you're familiar to, to Angular, you have been working with observables. Uh, and in Angular, RxJS is used extensively to handle the async data uh, when you communicate with backend and so on. So it provides the way to compose an async and event-based programming and it enables us to mutate the data, we can transform the data, filter, combine, and we can pretty much do whatever we want to do with the data within the observable. So today we're going to look into observables. We're also going to examine a couple of different ways they could be utilized. So let's get started. So now that we have everything side by side, we're going to start working with it. The first thing we want to do is jump into the app component and we are going to start writing a couple of lines here. So let's say we're going to utilize an API which is going to, the, going to be the brewery API where we essentially can search for breweries. Um, we can get started uh, firstly with this. So there's a free API we're going to utilize. So let's go ahead and generate a service. So we'll go ahead and write ng generate so service which is going to be, let's call it data service. Does not really matter at this point what the name of the service is. This is just for visibility purposes. So um, let's get started. So the first thing we want to do is essentially use the HTTP. So we need to import the HTTP client module here. Uh, so after we have imported it from here, we can start utilizing it. Sorry, I accidentally. Um, so it needs to be imported from, let's see, from, it should be Angular core HTTP. And let's see what happens here. There's nothing from core HTTP. It should be HTTP. Or common, sorry, HTTP. Sorry, so once that is imported from, uh, we can jump back to the service. We need to inject the HTTP here, uh, the client. So let's do that. We'll go ahead and inject it right now through dependency injection. So now we have that. Let's also go ahead and create an API. So we can say get all, and this is going to uh, return uh, observable which is going to be any of any of this this point we're not going to type anything we're also going to be able to add a search query so we can just say query and we can say as default the query is going to be an empty string and here we're going to say the return this dot http dot get and here we're going to essentially paste the string that we are going to fetch from from the actual uh, brewery site so we can go ahead and just copy the url for that all right so Copy in the API, we can see it down here. We just copy it real quick. Uh, we paste it here. And now we we have, uh, after reading on the documentation, they have a couple of properties which we, in, we, in, in which could assign. So in this case, we're going to do it. We're going to say the parent that we want to pass is the query. So if it's set, it's going to automatically add the query parent. If, if it's not set, it's not going to do it. So now going back to the app component, we can start utilizing and calling the data. So the first thing we could do is say private data service. So we need to inject the, the our service that we have. And here we can say this data, data service get. So this fetches the data. We could also set, say that we are defining an, a variable here, which is going to be an observable. And yet again, we're, we're going with the type, uh, with the type any in this case, because we, we want to speed this up a bit and focus more on the RxJS part. All right, so this is how you can fetch an observable. So if I would now go to the app component HTML file, I should be able to just print it like this. So I, uh, in order for us to actually call it, we need to utilize the async. So it's going to be fetched asynchronously because it's, yeah, it's, it's going to subscribe to it. It's going to unsubscribe to it and it's going to fetch the data from from the server. So as you can see here, we have a lot of data coming from that API. So now we can go, go back to the app component. So if you would want to mutate the data or if we would want to change it a bit, we could utilize the pipe. So the pipe is going to allow us to actually start utilizing Doric JS in this case. So different pipes that can be used. One example of that would be map. I, I really like map and this is something you usually work a lot with. So here we have a brewery type. Um, let's say here we have we have address underscore one. Uh, let's say that for the breweries, we don't want to have under address underscore one. We want to mutate it. We want to transform the data so that it only has address instead. 
So what we can do in this case is we, we can just fetch the breweries here and then we can return the breweries once again. Uh, breweries and here what we can do in this case is essentially loop through each one of the breweries and just transform the data. So we're going to say brewery brewery dot address equals to brewery brewery dot uh, address underscore one and obviously we need to add some types here for the future but now we are going to add so that we have the we're supposed to have the uh, the address here and and of course when we do this we need to make sure that it's being added so we could go ahead and, and do this and as you can see here address is being set here for all of them and the address should in fact be exactly what we have on the um on the address one let's see here I think it's quite difficult to read this so we could just go ahead and do um, just add the pre syntax here and it will format the data for us within the HTML so it's more readable uh, we should have done that from the beginning but um, now we should have the address and as you can see on the bottom we have the address but let's say we want to combine a couple of fields in order for us to create something that's that's better we want to mutate data from the back end and we have a couple of business logic on the front end so we can say we're going to add uh, address one and then we have the postal code maybe we want to have the brewery dot postal code in this case so now the address should contain both the address and the brewery postal code we could also say that we wanted to include the the state if you would like to have that for some reason so brewery dot state so now it should include all of the three things here so this is one way of actually using the map thing um, it's it's quite awesome but let's comment this out real quick so to continue we could either to make an even be, even better thing is we could remap the data and transform the data say all right we want to remove all of the breweries that we have which is not fulfilling our criteria which is that it's it's a large brewery and there's a lot of people so we can get drunk together and have fun um, all right so if I would now do this we should just give it a type any so giving it a type any we have the breweries filter and we're filtering away all of the breweries that does not have a brewery type of large and as you can see here we all of the the actual items we have have a brewery type of large so in this way you can filter away data you can transform the data with a map so this is heavily used uh, and this will then return the response in the next result so since we're doing it from the html this will include the response here all right so to continue we are going to cre create uh, we're going to change the logic a bit we're going to say that we are going to add an input field and the input when we search on the input field we want to update the response all right this is a quite valid case for the real world so let's go ahead and add an input field it does not need to look really good so we can say type search uh, we'll have it up here and we are also going to uh, start utilizing the um, form control which is a reactive form so we can call it search control and yeah since since we haven't imported the reactive forms module we need to navigate to the app module and start by adding it here reactive forms module so once this is imported we can just jump back real quick to the app component we can call uh, we can create a form control let's say do we have any intelligence we can say the default value is going to be an empty string uh, so when we search this it's coming it's going to to have a connection to this field to the search form control and what you can do with the reactive forms is quite amazing because this is also utilizing the reactivity and so on and utilizes the rxjs behavior so what we can do in this case, we can say this data equals to this a search control. So we're going to utilize this search control in this case. And we can say on value changes, which means every time we're, we are receiving a change within the value that we're searching within, we could do a couple of things. So we can also filter in the results here. We can say, all right, so when, when the length of the value, so in this case, it's returning whatever comes from the search control in the first pipe. Um, so if, if value dot length is greater than say greater than two so it, if it's three or larger we want it to continue if not we do not want it to continue so let's see what happens here i need to import it it's being imported yeah and, and this needs to return true 
All right, so since the value might be undefined this year, either we could just say non-nullable true. We're not going to have a null value here. It does not make sense. We're assigning an empty string. So in this case, this will trigger, if we reload the page now and we just comment out whatever we had before, it will first and foremost not display anything because it will come here and it will check the changes here and it won't have any data. So if I would start by writing something, hello, you will see that the value is actually coming from, from this field here. But now what we want to do is we want to add a switch map. So you might think, what is the switch map and, and how does this work? So the switch map is essentially the switch map operator is useful in scenarios where you want to switch to a different observable. So stream every time a new value is emitted by the source observable. So in our case, when, when the search control is triggered, we want to switch to the new one. And here we can also pass in the value, which is essentially going to be coming from the search control. So whatever goes through here will be passed to the next one. And the filter is essentially passing in whatever we had before. Um, so in our case, we are going to use a switch map because once this is triggered, we want to trigger the get, get to, to call all of the data that we have. So if you just create a new line in this case, um, we need to have it like this. All right, so now that we have added it like this, we could just save this and we'll see that it will trigger and, and send in the, the search query in this case. So if we go to the API, it will send, send the search query which will be applied to our API. And in this case, it, it would also make a request. So always use a switch map. Do not use nested observables. I have a video explaining why you should not do nested observables. It's a pyramid of doom. It's a hell. It does not look good and so on. And it might cause a, a couple of different strange things. Uh, so, all right. So saving this, of course, we need to pass in the value and not the search value because it might have been changed. We do not know in this step phase and we cannot really um, be completely sure about that. So writing brewery, you can see some results are being printed here. And with the switch map, it will actually change to, to the, uh, it will switch the observable once the, the source observable is, is completed, it will switch to this one. And then it will return that to the data in this case. So in this way, you can have a nested observables so always use either a switch map, you'd merge map, and it could be concat map, whatever is suitable for your case. In this case, I would recommend using switch map. We can also say, all right, we have a super expensive cost on our backend. And we do not want to search for each and every character that the user is writing. We could use the debounce. So we have built-in debounce time here. We can say, all right, we're going to debounce for 300 milliseconds, we're going to wait for the user to actually write something. So if I reload the page now and I print and I don't stop printing, you will see that it does not really search anything. And now when I it stops doing it, you'll see that it actually emits. All right, so <clears throat> what we want to do now is we want to add a couple of things. So we are going to, let's say, for searching for um, barrel in this case, we saw that we had a barrel uh, logic down here, which is essentially being uh, received. Uh, it should be uh, called from the through this API. So if you just write barrel, can it might be good to actually have a uh, right spell. And keep in mind we're using an API which is essentially is not in our control. We can only pass in what what they have. So just to validate, we need to make sure that uh, let's just validate by actually making sure that our data is being fetched in a correct way. And this can be done by just making sure that the query is being called here and we can just preview that the data is in fact giving us something based on this query that we're sending. So this, uh, whatever it prints is not within our control right now. We could filter it out. We could do whatever we want to do to it. And keep in mind, this will return the array of items. If I want to apply a map here and remap data, we could just copy whatever we had before. So in this case, we could just attach it uh, to have it here. Let's see, I missed something, I'm guessing, because that's why it's complaining a bit. So we can figure out that. Uh, so let me just minimize the screen a bit again, and we will get back to working. So what, what I did, what we want to do now is we want to add the, um, the map that we had down here. So we are going to want to say that we want to have the rural large type. 
so we can add the the map here so whatever is returned from the previous uh, observable will be returned to the next one filter is just passing what comes from before debounce time is also passing from what comes from before um, the switch map will return whatever we are returning from that observable and the map is returning whatever we're returning from from this change that we want to apply so in our case now we can say all right we're searching for something and there might be a case where we don't have uh, all of the results and as you can see here we have only we should only have brewery types which is of type large all right guys this is just the introduction to using rxjs and observables i hope you enjoyed thank you for watching all of the best bye